he was my, uh, my counselor, so somebody I could talk to. Uh, I just want to say I'm so proud of our group. Uh, you know, to be, to be down as we were, um, to w lose Will Barton to an injury, um, backs against the wall against the hottest team in the league, uh, and, and to find a way to come back and, and win that game is just uh, a tremendous feeling. Very happy and proud of David Adelman, Jordy, Popeye, Ribo, all the coaches. Uh, I, they did a, a masterful job. Uh, I apologize to the team. You know, uh, if we would have lost that game by one or two points, um, I have to be much better. I have to control my emotions. I cannot put them in a position like that. I love the fact that the fans appreciated it. Some of the players, like Aaron, loved it. Hey, you got my back. But I just got to be better than that. You know, that, that's something I felt bad about. Uh, Aaron, Aaron was phenomenal tonight. When he plays in attack mode, he got to the foul line 15 times. He's unguardable. And just another reason, example, uh, exhibition of why Nicole is the MVP. 46 points, triple-double, but he has 30 points in the fourth quarter in overtime. Uh, and to do it, I think, on 80% shooting. First guy to do it since a guy named Kobe Bryant. Uh, and then his 46-point triple-double with four blocks is, I think, since uh, the first since LeBron. Nick gave me all these stats. I'm trying to, you know, remember all of them. But d just overall, really proud of our guys because uh, that game could have gotten ugly in a hurry. And uh, we just kept on fighting. So kudos to our players. Kudos to David and the coaching staff uh, to beat one of the, the, the best teams in the NBA as of late. Did it seem specifically in the fourth quarter in overtime that he got stronger as the game went on? I mean, those full court fast breaks and then the dunks, the blocks, all of it. So we, we had an overtime game against New Orleans in New Orleans. And I don't know if you guys remember me saying after that game, um, I was actually still there for the overtime in that one, but I was saying it to myself in the back tonight. Um, how, how, what a luxury it is to have the MVP in an overtime game knowing that you could just play through them. They double team the Monte Morris makes a big three. Um, but it's just such a confidence, you know, that you have because you know in a close game, he's so clutch, he's gonna, he's gonna make the play again and again. Um, you know, so for, for him to step up the way he did, um, it just speaks to his greatness. I mean, 46, 11 and 12 with four blocks. Uh, and I thought at the very, the, the last play of regulation when he gets a steal, you know, I don't know if you realize it was only 3.2. He tried to pass to Jeff who was open. But I'm thinking he's going to shoot the floater and it's just going to be a walk off. And the place would have been pandemonium. So, uh, you know, we got another one tomorrow night. Again, we, we, can, we can be better in certain areas, but what a, what a team win, what a character win, uh, and could not be more proud of not just our, our, our players, but also the coaching staff as well. Tom, yeah. I mean, you know, he's like cold blooded killer, man. Um, he's, you know, that's what I do, <laughs> you know. Um, I, the guy, I, I loved it. You know, I gave David Adelman a shout out and all the players uh, were mobbing him, throwing water on him, which was great to see. That's a great moment. Um, knowing myself, it won't be the last time that David gets a chance to do that. Um, we gave uh, Aaron Gordon, the defensive player of the game. Guys were extremely excited for him. Checked on Will Barton. I don't think the ankle injury is too serious. Um, you know, we, we have, we're, we're in the middle of four and five right now, so we'll see what happens. But Nicola's just, you know, he steps up. And to Mike's point, I, I think into the fourth quarter, into overtime, he just, most importantly for me, he started to assert himself more. Hey, they're double teaming me. So what? I'm driving through it. I'm driving around it. I'm getting to the cup. Uh, and when he has that attack mindset, it's, it's just, you know, get out the way. Well, it seemed that overall, they kept playing Jeff from the start. I mean, 50 points in this game, I mean, talk about continuing to be aggressive and kind of bludgeoning them on six and in the same amount of time. Yeah, and I'd say to add to the 16, the paint is a 43 free throw attempts. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I was waiting in the hallway to hug all of our guys and the coaches, and I told Aaron Gordon, I said, you know what, if, if when teams, when individual players guarding you, you know what they're hoping? They're hoping you shoot a jump shot. They're saying, if he takes a jump shot, it's okay. And when you do that, you're letting them off the hook. When you put your head down and you get to the basket and you use your strength and athleticism, you're a completely different player. And those same players are saying, oh boy, I got my hands filled. 
So uh, he had 28, eight, got to the foul line 15. Nicola got there 12. So attack mindset, get into the paint, drive the ball. Um, and, and that leads to free throw attempts when you're not settling. You know, I mean, we took 33 threes tonight. I think the other night we took, I think against OKC, 46. And we weren't making them. So I liked our attack mindset uh, instead of a settle mindset tonight. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge. You know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, cer certain teams think that when games were rescheduled, they only affected one team in the NBA. Uh, it affected a lot of teams. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we're in the middle of four and five. And the last part of that four and five is the most dreaded back-to-back -back in the NBA at Sacramento coming home to play Golden State. We had a reschedule. We went to New York City three times this year. And while it was supposed to be a two-game road trip, became a six games and nine days road trip. So all the games that were canceled and rescheduled affected everybody, including us. So we won tonight. We'll wake up tomorrow morning, see how we feel, talk to our training staff, talk to our players, and see who is available to play and who's not. Uh, we're not going to make that decision right now. And then we'll do the same thing after Golden State tomorrow night before we fly to SAC. And then we'll address it again coming home. Um, but. Uh, it's definitely a concern, Harrison, because uh, you play an overtime game and you look at the minutes played, Aaron Gordon, 43, Nicola, 43, Monte, 36, uh, Jeff, 34. H heavy minutes, you know, so we'll, we'll kind of sit down and talk and figure out what's the best thing to move forward. What are, you, what are your thoughts on Golden State not going into the semester? You know, hey, uh, I mean this sincerely. You know, Steve Kerr, one, is a hell of a coach. Um, I learned a long time ago when I worked for a guy named Don Chaney. Um, uh, Steve Kerr's won championships. He knows his team better than I do. I'm not worried about who they're bringing, who they're not. I'm just worried about our team. And, and I mean that sincerely. Um, and, and we'll do what's best for our team. That's all head coaches do. When you make decisions, you're doing what's best for your team in that moment. And, and I think that's a decision that Steve made with his group. No problem with that. Um, you know, we just got to go out there and play our game, no matter who's shooting up for the Warriors tomorrow night. Thank you.